go to uh, how to correctly use the new stalker's claw from uh, Paddy Smith. And um, as you can see there, we have an animal that I needed to remove from the herd. It's a very weak uh, pricket with very thin tines and he would never have met anything. So it's best that we have um, uh, this animal uh, removed. So I'm gonna go through the Gronachan procedure with uh, the Paddy Smith Stalker's Claw. And uh, we have it here. As you see, it comes in um, a Cadex uh, sheet. This one has the orange handle, but it also comes with the black handle. And uh, it's not conventional, but you'll see actually how efficient it is in grolicking. Um, I have this uh, animal bled, because I bled him on the spot, but we've done nothing else. So we'll be proceeding with the grolic, and I'll be going step by step and showing you how efficient this little knife is and what a, uh, an efficient tool it is for uh, grolicking deer. So as I said, we haven't bled. So the next thing we want to do is we want to just slide up along there and we want to get the food pipe and the wind pipe out. And you've seen the way the knife so efficiently did that. Next, what we'll do is we'll separate the two. We'll scrape it, both sides, even give a little tear mark there. This just, when I tie this off, make it rough. When we tie it off, we tie off the, well actually that's, that's just a muscle. There we have the, the food pipe there. So, as I say, we all know at this stage that that just prevents any green, any green from going back inside our carcass when we pull that through. While we're here, and he has nice little antlers, we'll, we'll continue on up along. And we'll just check the submaxillary glands. As you can see at this time of year, their coat is, is changing. It's molting, so they're going to their summer coat. So, There we have the sub-maxillary glands there. But everything about this deer from its pre-mortem inspection showed that it is healthy. So everything there looks good. I have no concerns. What we can do is we can sever that there. And here we have the retropharyngeal glands. The retropharyngeal glands there and there. You can clearly see them. There's the retropharyngeal glands. And again, nothing to raise any kind of a concern there. There we have them. The retropharyngeal on both sides. So it's quite easy to get in on them. Just go above the vice box and sever the tongue across and you can uh, get at the uh, retropharyngeal. Real simple, real simple. So we've, we've inspected that and we're happy to proceed with the grolic. What we do now is we need to get into a position where we can work on our animal. So if we stand in this position here, this gives us total control and we can work our blade. We 
Remove the test stairs first. Test stairs are removed. Then underneath the pizzle, we remove the pizzle. We can move it right up along like that. Leave that there for a minute. You can just, what, do you see the way the point is? It just makes this so much easier. Once we see the green, our knife goes in. Because the angle of the knife, it cuts up. And the advantage with the blade that cuts up is you're cutting the hair outwards so you get minimum hair inside your animal. Now, at this point, we can just reach in here and we can squeeze the bladder, making sure the bladder is empty. And the bladder is empty on that. So we can simply remove the pizzle. Simple as. At this point, we just toss all the green offal out. Toss all the green offal out. Then we come up along to the back passage. That's only fat there. So we come up along to the back passage and we squeeze any feces down towards the stomach. Then coming up a few inches from where the feces has stopped, we just sever it and leave it outside. And with this then, we just knot it off. We can remove any of the feces knot it off. That will prevent any feces spilling back inside our carcass. Then holding our knife at that angle, we place it in here and we simply sever the diaphragm. Then we move it across all the green offal to the other side. That way we can move our knife in and sever the diaphragm down to the base of the fillets. So all we have to do then is reach forward and remove everything. So just cast that aside, sever it, diaphragm at the bottom of the fillets, the kidneys, and we have everything out. So we can spread out the intestines and check all the glands along there for any abnormalities, but everything appears good as they always are here. I've never had a concern with any of the deer I've culled on this property. There we go everything laid out there. We can check the kidneys. The kidneys are absolutely fine, covered in a good coating of fat, indicating good health. We come to the lungs. The lungs are good and spongy. There is the entrance wound of the bullet. So we do get a bit of blackness and blood splash around there. And a bit of fragmentation of the bullet. Then we look along at the glands that are running at the back of the lungs and everything appears normal. Everything appears normal. We just come to the heart, but as I say, we never ever really get an issue with the heart. The heart is in the sack. We can take the heart out. I quite like heart. So um, I'll, I'll put that aside and I'll use it later. We split it just to allow the blood to come out but um, that will be used later and consumed because everything here is good. So there we have all the offal uh, removed and we have our carcass brolic with our knife. And the next thing what we can do is, I normally do it back at the vehicle, but holding 
steady like that. Again, pointing the knife down. Most of the cuts made with this knife is in a downward cut. So a little cut there, small little cut there. And then putting your thumb in, come across the top. And all the way. Then pointing your point outwards. I'm in a kind of an awkward position because I need the camera to film this, but we're going okay. I'm happy enough. Then we need to come underneath that. Holding it up, just making sure none of the pellets are gonna go inside our carcass. And then what we do is we clear it all around. Holding it and squeezing the top, we reach in, making sure no pellets go inside. There's our knot that prevented any pellets. And while I was taking it out, I squeeze. And there you can see where I emptied the bladder. So no urine has gone inside uh, the carcass. So we have the back passage removed. We have made our cuts here for hanging. And then we'll just simply remove the feet. Again, pointing the edge of the knife downwards. What we want when we're removing the feet, what people don't realize, is we want what's called flat tops. The game dealer prefers flat tops. So, as I say, I'd normally do this back at the vehicle, but the vehicle is right beside us. So, a cut for hanging. And then simply, all the way around, about that distance up, once the tendons is severed, it just pops. And we have what I call flat tops. Flat tops, both sides. And that's what we aim to do. And it also allows a very strong point for hanging. So we bend and tilt. Once See, we, with this knife, we can use the point to our advantage. Just straight into the knee and all the way around. Again, flat tops. Same on this side. And put point of our knife in. All the way around. flat tops and even with this knife we can remove the head as I say any sharp knife will do it but this one just makes life so much easier the point of the knife is where most of the cutting ability is but it really comes into its own on the grolic so we've made that cut there I've exposed the axle joint and then we just follow it down round There is our carcass completely ready to be loaded up to the vehicle using the very small but very efficient stalker's claw. But as I say, a lot of the work would be done back at the vehicle, the feet, the heads and the back passage. But I just did the whole lot today using this knife. I've done several deer with this knife and because of the steel selected, it's really maintained that cutting edge really well. And all I'll have to do is maybe give it a slight rub on a sharpening steel and we're back in action again. So I hope everyone found that interesting and uh, that's our work done for today on this fantastic uh, day. So we, we really enjoyed our outing here. And as I said, um, this young male that was obviously never gonna make anything or never amount to much has been removed. I wouldn't like him breeding. He's not one I'd like 
uh, here, so it's best cold. There's two more in the cold program lined up and uh, we'll do them at a later date. But we did a full inspection of everything. We did a complete brolic and you got an introduction again to the Paddy Smith Stalker's Claw. Hope you enjoyed it.